Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Pit People. This is an early access game uh, that is a little bit of a mix of... Well, let's, let's throw a few influences into the melting pot here. It's from the Behemoth, so it has that Castle Crashers art with that Battle Block Theater style narration from Stamper again. Very tongue-in-cheek, very funny, almost like Rick and Morty-esque adult cartoon humor, if you know what I mean. Um, so it's got that element going for it uh, from the artistic standpoint. But then also, uh, a little Skulls of the Shogun or a little XCOM mixed with... Pokemon, weirdly enough. At its core, it is an RPG that uh, plays in a kind of Fire Emblem style. You have a grid-based 2D combat system where you move a squad around and they deal damage. You know, there's different classes, they level up, etc, etc. But you can also capture enemies and then add them to your squad and then you can use them to go out on missions later. You can level them up, customize them in a sort of Pokemon-y sort of way. So we're gonna get started here and uh, this is uh, code that was provided by the behemoth. It's coming out in early access on the 13th last night I sat down and I finished all the single-player content in, in the early access build uh, It took me about an hour and 40 minutes. I mean you'll see that when we get into our save file here uh, an hour and 40 minutes here um, But there is other content as well. The story content is actually well curated There's missions and, and side quests that you can go on and a lot of like uh, cinematics with really high quality scripting, voice acting, and animation, actually. And you'll see that we're going to get started on a new save file just so that you can see that. And then we'll jump into the one that I've spent more time with so we can see some more mechanics-driven stuff. Um, but there is online play as well. You can battle your friends. There's also a, an unfair mode that you can use to, like, test your squad against difficult waves of AI. But anyway, well, let's just get started here because I've been talking for too long. I'll admit I also don't know how much... Uh, the game is going to be when it comes out. It doesn't say on the store page. I couldn't find information regarding this. Just look into the sweet face of my son Ruka in the top right corner and, uh, you know, let, let that take you away. It is co-op as well. You can play two-player on the same, uh, system. I'm playing the PC version right now, but I am using a controller, um, which is why you're gonna see controller prompts here, but I'm gonna shut up during the intro. I find myself wondering what the world must have been like before the bear crashed into our frail planet, transforming all we once knew into a colorful kaleidoscope of delicious chaos, and I love it. The world was more hospitable, no doubt, more orderly, more sensibly sickening because it sounded boring, and I hate being bored. I can't imagine a world without the bear or the storms, yes, the storms. Beautiful waves of emerald blood cry down from the heavens, promising death in lawless disarray, constantly upsetting the order. I get butterflies in my tummy just thinking about it. Yes, yes! Speaking of which... So that is, uh, just the introduction, and there's gonna be a little bit more voice work here that I probably shouldn't talk over. Let's see... Oh, it's Horatio, the humble blueberry farmer, loving father, and the most boring creature on the face of this planet. But what's this? Looks like you've got a spicy situation on your hands, hmm? Well, it's been nice knowing you, Horatio, not really, but now it's time for you to die, yes. How exciting! Not for you, of course. Hmm. So yeah, it, it does have that same kind of like Battle Block Theater style narration from Stamper, but a little bit more malevolent and it really gets the job done in this game. Like, it, the cutscenes are some of the most fun that I've had with the, the limited time that I've spent with it so far. And it's written in a really like Adult Swim positive sort of way, like mature but also irreverent kind of like malevolence. Irreverent malevolence? That probably is a phrase that already exists, but I'll take it anyway. Um, I'm gonna lower the volume just a little bit here so I don't feel like I have to shout over top of it. Um, so this is just our tutorial encounter. We'll do this really quickly and then we're going to move on to uh, getting a little bit into the deeper mechanic stuff of the game, the squad management, and actually, you know, going out and doing side quests and capturing new minions and stuff like that. But basically, you know the old video game trope, you know, you see that mountain, you can climb it. If you see a unit, you actually can capture it. We're not going to see it in this initial battle here, but this will do a good job of teaching us... Um, or teaching you the basic mechanics of what's going on here. So we're playing as Horatio. Horatio is hated by the bear. 
Um, the bear crashed into the earth like a comet and now is causing chaos and destruction and just generally being like the dungeon master for his own uh, kind of personal game of, of Dungeons and Dragons here. Um, we'll get more characters as well as the time goes on. Again, this is just a t tutorial before we jump in here. So, um, it is uh, Fire Emblem, basically. Skulls of the Shogun. I'm trying to think of other 2D uh, games like this. Commandos, maybe, to some extent, or that new... Um, oh, what is it called? The... the Japanese, like, Sengoku period strategy game that everybody tells me to play because it's apparently it's awesome, but I haven't played it yet. It's kind of like that. Um, but it's a little simpler even because you don't even choose what your units do. Or rather, you don't choose like, their attacks in, like, a Final Fantasy style. Um, you just move them where you want them to go, and then you end your turn, and pretty much everything uh, happens after that point just with AI scripting. So... You, you, by the way, I know people are going to be like, oh, NL, it's scripting, NL's going to be into this. No, nah, it's not like, you know, you don't program what your units actually do in advance. That doesn't take away from it, though. Um, basically, if your units are, like, within a certain distance of an enemy, they have a guaranteed attack they're going to do. Uh, if they're right next to an enemy, they have another attack that they're going to do. But apart from that, you, they don't actually choose targets. So if you have multiple targets, they could attack both. They could attack one twice or, you know, do something else. So we're just going to move Horatio up here. Horatio is basically, uh, at least at present, he's specced as kind of a tanky character. So he can take a lot of damage. And anytime uh, anybody shoots at him, especially with an arrow, um, there's a decent chance that his shield is going to block it. The larger the shield, the worse their mobility is, I think, but also the uh, the greater chance that they'll block incoming arrows. And um, by blocking those arrows, you also get, uh, I think you get gold at the reward screen. You use that gold to buy new cages to capture new people for your squad, to upgrade the size of your squad, and also to purchase equipment or new fighters uh, for your squad. So we're going to, um, well, let's just have a good example of this. Like, what I was going to say is, you know, your target is determined by where you stand, as it says down there in the bottom left. If we stand here, you can see that one guy with the broken sword is outlined in blue. That means we can attack him. If we stand here, we could attack either of these guys. If we stand here, we could attack either of those guys. And if we stand down here, we could attack um, only this guy. So I want to attack the guy with the small shield, although that means he has a chance to dodge. So I'm going to get back here as well and see if maybe we can get to the arrow guy quickly. Because it makes sense to, to knock out the ranged units. And I don't, I don't know if it's plausible to die during this. I will say that on normal difficulty... As someone who's played a lot of these kinds of games, uh, with middling results, admittedly, but, you know, I've got XCOM 2 experience, XCOM Enemy Within experience, and Long War, although Long War kicked my ass, um, experience. Uh, it has been pretty easy so far, but there, there is an insane difficulty mode uh, that probably amps it up a little bit, but I haven't tried that yet, and I, I don't think there's permadeath, but that might be available on the insane mode. Anyway, um... Our, our son has just been crushed by the boot of the bear. And then this guy's like, I gotta get out of here. So then we just come over here and hopefully KO this guy. I don't believe that there's a, a positioning bonus, but I could be mistaken. Like, I don't believe that if you get behind a unit, you get flanking points or something like that. But that might change also depending on what kind of weapon you have equipped. There's a variety of different weapons. Like, I'm just using a sword right now. Like, a sword and a big shield that looks like a fence. Um, and now that we've defeated this mission, I'm going to go back to the main menu and then start playing some content that's a little bit later in the game now that you have a bit of a, a better understanding of how things go so let's load into this save file here and and the world is going to be much different than you saw it before but um let me go to to the pit people crew here so this is my squad that i've been rolling with i'm actually going to raise the volume again a little bit here oh okay that's also fine i guess it's a different save file so that makes sense this is the squad that I've been rolling with here. So we've got Horatio, he's got a sword and an umbrella shield. And then we've got Pipistrella, she's another story character. She's level 10, Horatio's level 8. Oh, she's got so many more kills that she's leveled up faster, I see. Um, you can see, like, on the stat screen here, here's Horatio's movement allowance. There's how much HP he has, roughly. Um, and I don't know what weight does. Maybe it contributes to, like, inability to be knocked back or have your position change. Um, damage is obviously your damage. Defense, I think, is how much damage you take if a hit gets through. Block is your likelihood to block an attack or how much damage you can block. And dodging is your percent chance to, to roll a D, D whatever and get a dodge roll. It might even be a D6 based on the fact that it looks like it goes from 0 to 5 there. Um, Pipistrella is another story character. I've got her equipped with a... 
a sweet hat that gives her no bonuses but looks cool and uh, she's also got a mace which is very important because we were fighting a lot of helmeted units and her base damage is lower but she gets uh, more damage she gets a damage bonus against helmeted characters then we have Yosef he's another story character as you might expect um, he has a ranged attack so he can go and uh, like smack enemies with those screws but also if he stands one hex away he becomes a ranged unit and a ranged unit um, he throws them like throwing axes basically they can stun units but also they deal damage and you can do that twice per turn um sophia another story character uh she has uh like a i guess you call it a rapier and then she has a net and the net is like if you stand close to them you hit them with the sword if you stand one hex away you'll throw the net on them and that basically roots them in place then we have baby iceberg not a story character she's equipped with a bow uh the closer to enemies, the more likely she is to hit, and the less she moves, the more arrows she can fire. And then finally, we've got Gluten. Gluten's a cupcake. That's basically our healing class. He sacrifices his own HP to heal his friends at range, and then occasionally drops icing that he can use to heal himself. Obviously, a game that doesn't take itself too seriously, but there's still brutality here. I mean, you just watch Horatio's son get crushed by the foot of a 40-foot-tall bear. Well, it's actually much larger than that, but you won't see that here. Anyway... There is character customization to a large degree as well. So we've got Gluten. You know, right now I've got him equipped with the Waffle, but this is just cosmetic. We could also throw some candy corn in there, or we could have none there. So we're gonna just uh, give him the Waffle because he looks so darn cute. And then, you know, we can give him a Raspberry Swirl instead of just being plain vanilla. This is not the best example because those don't change his stats, but you know, maybe we go to uh, Horatio here and we go, okay, he's, he's equipped with, you know, the Horatio stash. But we can give him some other kind of hair if we want. I've, I've got some other stuff here that's like, um, because I played Battle Block Theater and Castle Crashers, so I have like a Hattie Haddington that I can use as a cosmetic hat, but I don't want to mess with the main character. Um, but we can give them uh, helmets as well, and the helmet actually will incur statistical changes. So, like, if I put the Orange Knight helmet on him, he is immune to fire, or at least has higher defense against fire. If I put the Red Knight, he's, you know, lightning. Green Knight is going to be poison, I think, and then the Blue Knight is ice. So, um, you can get equipment that gives you st statistical bonuses beyond just cosmetic bonuses. And I don't know if these actually do anything for us, but they look kind of cool. And then, of course, there's the weapon. So, right now, we've got him equipped with, like, a medium-sized sword. Um, the, if we switch these, it's actually not, at least at present, going to adjust the stats. But we could equip him with something else, like we could give him a, a great sword, like this $100 bill if we want. Or we could give him, you know, a little tiny sword, like the Recruited Door, which is going to raise his dodging chance, but basically turn him into a, uh, a different kind of unit. I'm kind of happy with the way our units are spec'd right now. So we have, like, a tank, DPS, I don't know what you would call the, the third class here, is kind of like a thief, I guess. Um, actually, there's like a rogue and then a thief and then, I don't know, an archer and then a cleric or whatever. If you want to use semi-traditional RPG rules. Um, let's go out here and explore the world map. So this is basically the town that we've encountered uh, over the course of our uh, of our gameplay so far. This is where, you know, the, the titular, like, pit people are. This is the pit. We can go into the pit and this is where we can, you know, solicit games online and we can trade with people. But we can also play uh, against the AI and if we defeat Unfair Mode against the AI, I assume that, you know, there's something to do with that we get a reward of some kind there. But for now, we're not going to do that. We're going to take on a quest here and uh, let's see what our quests are right now. Deliver mail to the cyber colonists of Freeware. Escort Gooseberry's shy bladder to Tinkletown or help Gluten check in on his best friend Scrumptious. Let's do help Gluten check in on his best friend Scrumptious. And we're going to go over here and buy a, a recruit cage. And you can see our inventory over there on the left. Um, that looks like a boat right now. Basically, Princess Sophia landed here from Spain. There is Spain in this universe. Well, I guess this is the Earth. And she's like, I claim this land in the name of, you know, Princess Sophia. And so she's just... Driving around like a conquistador speaking Spanish and discovering new lands for experience. Um, but now that we have a recruit cage, we can show off uh, the extra mechanic of actually capturing a unit. So despite there only being about an hour and a half or so of single player content in the early access build right now, most of it is curated and scripted like that uh, introduction scene is, and it's really, really funny. So it does a good job of that, and then there's this extra, like, the world map is populated with tons of monsters here. Like, let's just go fight one set of monsters here, just to do it. Or one set of baddies. And, uh, we could use our recruit cage here, but I don't think I really want to, because these guys... I actually have already captured some like this. <laughs> so we'll do that later. We'll, we'll, we'll get a better selection of enemies. Um, so there is a lot of content. That's not enough to say, like, you know, 
start playing it immediately right now because, you know, you could spend 100 hours with it. Definitely the curated content is more meaningful. I'm gonna put our two units with shields at the front. And then, uh, our two ranged units behind. And then our healer even behind them. And then, Sophia, you can just go here. Even on controller, it's a it's a really easy interface to learn. Um, it works well. If you ever played Skulls of the Shogun, it's a lot like that. But, you know, it benefits from its simplicity uh, when you're using a controller, for sure. Alright, so I've been rooted in place here as Horatio. But, um... We're really doing fine right now. So, we're gonna leave... I'll, I'll go through the methodology here that I have. Uh, Horatio cannot move. He's frozen in place. Some of the textures are a little wonky. I turned it down to low and then turned it back up to ultra, and I think not all the textures joined me. Cool kind of arcade uh, interface as well here, too, I, I think, at least. But, um... Okay, so we'll start with uh, our healer. Our healer is going to stay in the same place. We want to make sure they're protected. We're not going to get close to death here, to be honest with you. So we might as well just make sure that they're protected because they're very squishy. Not just because they're a cupcake. Um, our ranged unit, we're not going to move because they're protected right now. And also, um, the less they move, the more they're actually able to shoot. Then, uh, our DPS, we're going to move up here so she can hit both of these units. I don't know if the shark hat counts as a helmet. I'm going to guess that it probably doesn't. Then, I'm going to move uh, Sophia to here. The idea being that she could root one of these, these units in place. Uh, because she's far away from them. And then, I'm going to move... Actually, I'm not going to move Yosef. Because Yosef is just going to attack the only unit he can see right now. Although he does less damage against that unit, apparently. Oh, maybe this unit is strong against ranged attacks because they have a shield. So we'll get him up into DPS, or uh, in, into melee range. And then pass the turn and see how we go here. Alright, so we've got him rooted in place. We leveled up twice there. Uh, another good analog for the game, I think, is the, um... You're gonna hate me for this, but... <laughs> another good analog for the game is the, uh... The new South Park game looks like it's gonna have combat that's very similar to this. And from what I played at PAX, it has combat that's, uh... That's very similar to this. So if you're more familiar with that, uh, feel free to use that as an analog as well. So, uh, this unit is rooted and almost certainly will die. What are we gonna do? Well, I'm gonna move here to block this unit off. This definitely counts as a helmet, actually. Okay, so let's let's actually go cancel that move. Because we want to um, not hit the helmeted unit with Horatio, because swords are weak against helmets. So we want um, Yosef to come over here, and then Pipistrella can come over here. And we can start to get over here and maybe uh, root the ranged unit to have a better chance. And I think we're just going to leave our cupcake where it is right now. Hopefully it's still at range. And then Horatio, um, really we want him to be here. Well, the danger is that if we leave him here, or if we move him like here so he attacks this person, we're going to leave an opening for this person to get all the way back over here. So yeah, let's just leave Horatio in place and hope he attacks the right unit. And in the meantime, we'll create a block so that they can't easily attack our... Uh, they can't easily attack our, our squishy units that we've got at the back. And they just walked around me. You know, <laughs> I'm not the greatest player of these games, uh, and I make mistakes, but it is, it's quite lenient so far. Um, we want Horatio, who is carrying a sword, which is weak against helmeted units, to attack the unit that definitely has a sword, has a sword himself. We want you to hit the helmeted unit, because you're going to do more damage. Cupcake, you're fine where you are. Gluten, I should say. Now, you... You get weak there. I don't know. I'm gonna try you right here. And then, honestly, we should just go balls to the wall on this ranged unit like this. Because we want to make sure that they're not firing in arrows at all times. So we got a crit. We got the kill as well, which is gonna give us experience. I think you get experience uh, for being part of combat, but you also get experience for getting kills. Um, which is probably an easier way to do it. Alright, so what's the ticket now? We're doing pretty well so far. Um, go over here, probably KO this unit. Horatio's not doing too well against uh, helmeted units, so I think he should just bounce. You might as well ensure that we get the kill here. And now our archer, uh, we want them to move up, because the closer they are to a target, the more likely they're going to be to get a hit. And then we're just going to move our... Um... Did I really do that little damage? Well, we don't want to capture this unit, so you know what? Just fall back for now. Um, this should get the kill, I think. Please. The dream is real. Okay. 
So now, with only one unit left, we could use Princess Sophia, who has the net in her right hand here, uh, to capture this unit. But I've already captured... Actually, you know what? I captured Starfish Man. So we probably could capture this unit, at least to show off what it's like. So I'm gonna move Horatio up here. I don't know if you get a bonus for, like, having units, um... Closer to being dead before they get hit, if that makes sense. We'll probably take some damage here we did not need to take. Come on, Horatio, you're better than that. Uh, so here's how you capture a unit. You stand in net range with a character equipped with a net, and as long as you have a cage in your inventory, you recruit them, so it does become like Pokemon a little bit. And this is an element of the game. At first, I was like, I played this at PAX like a year and a half ago, and I was like, that's cool, man. It's like a behemothy XCOM. I'm totally into that. I'll play that for sure. When I got to the Pokemon, you know, gotta catch them all element, I was like, that's amazing. It's such a novel twist on things. I mean, you can capture units in XCOM, but you don't really like have that same kind of collectathon aspect going there. Um, Let's see. You know, because you, do, you don't just like take over a sectoid and then that sectoid becomes like, you know, part of your squad. This is all the inventory that we got, so, um, this is stuff that we can equip, like, for example, uh, the Raspberry Swirl, we already have one of those, but the Chocolate Swirl, we could equip that. The Claw is the unit that we have here. Whoops, I did not do the, uh, the quest, I thought we could go back out and do the quest later, but it also has that kind of, like, Darkest Dungeon, like, buy provisions before you go out on a quest. It really is, like, a mixture of a lot of smart ideas from, from very popular strategy games that have come out semi-recently, so, um... We could... What have I done here? Oh god, no, 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 you must have at least one... No, no, no. I want to go back to the A squad, thank you. Um, we can change our units, I think. Or maybe we have to put them on B squad first, but I have a collection of units. Where is this collection of units? I'm not going to Insane Di Well, let's see if the Insane Difficulty gives us a prompt. No, Insane Difficulty... No, insane difficulty off. Alright, if everything's on fire, it's on. I understand. That makes sense. Um, I have an assortment of, of other units, I guess. Oh, do we just go back here, press Y on one of these guys? Yes, yeah, so you can see the other units I've captured here. I got Gordon. He's a ranged fireman, which means that he puts things in ice. Just go with it. Uh, we got Baby Flavored, he's a human, he's got a starfish on his face, and then we got Claw, he's a ranged archer who's only level 1. So we're not using them right now because they're definitely like a B squad, but you get the idea. Alright, let's go out and like actually do a quest here, because I am a dumb idiot. Um, help Gluten check in on his best friend Sump Scrumptious, that seems like a good idea. Alright, we're gonna buy another recruit cage, just in case we get uh, better units. That's like buying Pokeballs, basically. And we're gonna head out here, so... Uh, you'll excuse me if I seem a little bit glowing in, uh, in my praise for Pit People so far, but I really feel like Castle Crashers, great game, thin conceit, really fun multiplayer that can get old a little fast because the mechanics are pretty simple. This is, uh, when you discover new areas of the map, I think that's why she gets excited there. Um, and, and gives you experience for that matter. Oh, here's our quest. That was, like, super close. Uh, this seems like it has a lot more longevity, and I'm excited to check out the online stuff. I haven't had a chance to do it yet, because no one else I know owns the game, but the idea that you could get into, like, you know, basically, Pokemon battles with your friends with the squad that you've built is really neat. Yeah, he used to sit right here, baking in the sun. The smell was bananas! That and strawberry. Everybody always thought he was so amazing. Nobody ever drooled over me like that. What about what's-his-face? The Bridgeside Bandit. Oh, the Gluten is a story character. Oh, him? He was only my friend because of the health bonus. Hold on, there's a receipt here. Balloons, gift wrap, Berry Delicious Cake with Happy B-Day Dolph on it. Berry Delicious? But that's Scrum's mix. Come on, we can probably smell his trail if we're quick. Now, as we're driving this thing, we do have, uh... Cannons as well. So if we find an enemy, we do not want to get... Uh, into a fight with, like this guy, we can press Y and accidentally bomb our home city. Now, if you point at them and you press Y, you will shoot like a, a missile at them that incapacitates them for a brief period of time. I gotta say, the world map is like extremely large, given that the game is in early access right now. So he was stunned, so he didn't get hit there. Um, 
you you do not drive like two seconds away from the base. You're, you're driving for like a long time sometimes. We have to fight the fork bandit here. Let me get around this mountain range. I have to save Scrumptious and his Berry Delicious mix. Sometimes, like, this is probably the most frustrating part of the game right now. Is, like, I want to get to a section of the map. You just kind of walk around until you get the perfect selection of, uh, of terrain that makes it plausible for you to find where you need to go. It's just, like, everybody understands how it's done. It's just kind of tedious to have to walk around and, and be like, okay, where the hell is the actual exit here? And it doesn't, it's not like it really adds difficulty. Like, the difficulty is in not accidentally getting in a random battle. What this means is that it's just going to take us forever to, uh, to drive back. Insane mode yields, yields much more challenge and slightly more loot. Just one bite, boss, please. Nobody eats until I make a wish. Oh, thank goodness. He's looking really hungry, guys. Okay. It's a pretty early mission, so it shouldn't take us too long to, uh... It shouldn't take us too long to get this done here. I've seen this one unit before. Um, what is it? Zorblad. I think this guy does, like, wicked damage, and then also, um... He can move your position. So we do want to have like Horatio up there, but he's gonna He's gonna get butt blasted to be real with you. And then I think we want to have um, Sophia up here rooting that unit in place so it can't get behind us and then maybe we'll try to get our uh, You know DPS That is a helmeted unit. So that makes sense get our DPS like out there. Uh, wait, wait, wait cancel that last move No, Horatio you're good, dude. I want to cancel the cupcake move. There you go. Um, just keep the cupcake like behind cover, but in between these two units. Uh, you can shoot over top of those mountains, I think. So you should really just get behind cover yourself and then take as many pot shots as you can. All right, that unit's rooted in place, which means we can make a move next turn and maybe hit some units that are a little weaker. Oh, he can still move us despite being rooted. I mean, that makes sense. Happy birthday to me. Ow, cut it out. Uh, we could, I guess, just, like, bum rush him and hope that we can beat the crap out of him here. He has a shield, I have a sword. He has a sword, I have a shield. Like, it's a pretty good mixture right now. Um, well, first things first. We can not run through units, but we can run around them. Uh, let's get our bird in here so that it can do double damage, or at least it can hit both units. Um... I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot for the moon here. I don't really want to kill that dude's friend. We can have Horatio come back here. And then, um, I don't know, at least try to root that unit that does melee damage. And then you can stay in the same place for now. Let's give this a try. Alright, we're hidden units. If we crit them, they'll get stunned, which is nice. And the arrows seem to rain down pretty nicely there. Um, I am... What is attacking the cupcake? I'm imagining we have to protect the cupcake or, uh... It's gonna be a problem. Happy birthday, dear Dolph Dolph. Okay, that last bite hurt a lot. How much health does this guy have? Uh, more than I'd like, unfortunately. Well, that cupcake is not gonna live too long. Alright, root the, uh... Root this dude in place. And then run away from him. But not into harm's way completely. Oh, our own cupcake is gonna get crapped on here. Okay. Alright, keep hitting him. Keep hitting him. You're doing a good job so far. Ish. Just keep their DPS unit only being able to attack like once per turn. I think that'll be a positive for us. And if that dude like is just one hit or is one tile away and can't hit anybody, then that's ideal. At all times. Happy birthday to me. Wow, that was even worse. How close is this guy? Ah, he's getting there, dude. We gotta get past. Alright, I'm tell I'll tell you what. Are we gonna do this? We're gonna make plays to get by? Or are we just gonna keep you know shooting for the moon here? Are we gonna keep shooting for a new moon record? I think we should have our cupcake. And range DPS. <clears throat> Try to get as far away as possible. 
Everybody else, you're doing an okay job right now. I think just stay where you are. We're going to give some meaty targets for the Sasquatch here there to hit. All right. Princess Sophia is going to get hit a little bit. Oh, they, they finally created a, a gap in the line. And that's actually great for us. Um, which means we can just kind of pour through here. We do want to do damage to... I know, Ruka. It's it's a complicated situation right now. Um, we do want to do damage to... The unit that's attacking the cupcake specifically. And you're going to stay there because you can root their DPS unit. Beautiful. Our ranged unit is going to take some damage here, I think. Or our, our archer specifically is going to take some damage. We need to get a stun in there, like, as soon as possible against the dude who's in... Who's, who's going buck wild on this cupcake right here. Ah, uh, he's only at, like, half HP. We'll probably be able to live long enough. So, Horatio sucks against this dude because he's got a helmet on. So, straight up, Horatio just comes up here. You should still keep attacking helmet dude, I think. Because it's the best use of your time. And then you... Oh, the ranged attack sucks against him. Okay, so you come up here and hopefully you'll just choose the right target naturally. And then we're going to send the cupcake up here so we can hopefully heal our most uh, in need unit. And then Princess Sophia all the way over here is in a bit of a weird spot. She might as well root the enemy that is... Uh, is there an optional objective for this one? Nah. Um, she might as well root one enemy because she can't get away from both of them, so... Come on. Come on. We're doing damage. We've healed, uh, Pipistrella, which is important here as well. And remember, all we gotta do is kill the birthday boy. This is like, a. It's a mission with one pretty obvious objective. Are we gonna get him on this turn? I doubt it. But we're gonna be close. Like, first off, Apple Man is dead. Because he's gonna get hit by, uh... Just back up one so we root this guy. He's gonna get hit by, um... Our unit that has a bonus against helmets. By the way, when you level up, which happens oftentimes, at least in the early game, after a single kill, uh, you go back to your max HP. So it is one of those games where you heal up fully. So a clutch level up can really, like, save you the game. Or save you the mission, at least. Alright, this guy's going down on this turn. There is no doubt in my mind. He's getting roasted and toasted. We didn't kill everybody, but we're going to get the job done regardless. Horatio leveled up in his quest to avenge or perhaps even rescue his son. Whoa. Uh, you guys can have the presents, okay? Yeah, happy birthday to you. Later. Wow, I thought that was it. Can you believe these monsters, Gluten? Oh, you know, I shouldn't have put Raspberry Swirl. Now I can't tell them apart. Is that offensive? Oh, you know, they mostly leave me alone, but I'm glad you're okay, Scrum. Me too. Now help me get this candle out of my frost. All right, the quest is complete. Sometimes it'll give you the option to continue playing. Do you choose to leave now, gaining all quest spoils? I'm going to say no, because I want to try to capture that DPS unit and then add it to my squad. So there's like a certain risk reward there. Um, we're going <laughs> to slowly escape here. Remember, we don't want to kill DPS. We want to kill, um, actually, we don't want to kill their, their, I mean, it might even be a tank, but we don't want to kill that unit. Just get Scrumptious, like, safe here, or, you know, uh, Gluten safe here. What are you doing, Cupcake Man? Oh, that's, that's our Cupcake, that's our new Cupcake, right. Um, we just want to, uh, we just want to kill the Sword unit and the Fork unit, and then we're good to go. We can capture the other guy in a net and add him to our squad, and who knows, maybe you could even replace uh, our dude with the screws here, who I I don't know if I'm doing a really good job with him, to be honest with you. Alright, uh, root that unit. Horatio should get up front here, because he is our tank. I'm really hopeful that we can kill Fork unit here right off the bat. Nobody else needs to move in that case. Come on, arrows are gonna kill Fork, man. They just need to land. Well, you didn't even shoot because he's too close to you? 
It barely makes any sense. All right, Horatio got destroyed there. That's okay, you know. We need to get Pipistrella up here because we're just trying to root the. Um, ah, wait, no, no, we're trying to root the uh, the Sam Squanch. So I actually think we want to put you here, and then Pipistrella, you shouldn't be there because you're gonna get hit by that rooted unit. And then Horatio can go here. Ah, but he shouldn't go there. Hold up. He should go here because we want to make sure that the Sam Squanch, when rooted, doesn't have an easy attack. And then get the cupcake up there. And then you just walk over here. And if we don't kill this fork man on this one, I'm gonna be real displeased. There we go. 120 XP. Did we oh we we rooted the wrong unit. Which was a risk that I, I should have known. You know, had a chance to happen. Is this guy done? He's probably done and dusted. Uh we only need to kill this unit and then net the other one. Horatio, you should just move on. Let's get the, the near guaranteed kill on that guy at the top there. Oh, we recruited him because we got the kill. We set up a simultaneous kill and, and steal. The Hair Troll, furry powerhouse, able to regenerate lost health, can toss with a single lunge. Warning, keep away from fire. So he's probably weak against fire. Um, that's a pretty good indicator of, I think, what makes Pit People a really interesting game right now. It's a cartoony XCOM with kind of like, instead of taking a very, very serious tone, it's got a much more cartoonish tone. Uh, almost feels like uh, an Adult Swim sort of thing here. You grab that loot and there's a, a really compelling gameplay loop. You know, you get a quest, you buy resources for it in Darkest Dungeon style, you get provisions for it, and then you, um, you buy just enough... Like, exactly as little as you think you're gonna need in order to survive, but not waste any resources. And then you come out on the mission, you know, maybe you want to capture some units, maybe you just want to complete the quest and get whatever loot they're gonna give you to begin with. Um, you can choose to get involved with these battles for grinding, or you can choose to uh, ignore them if that's something that you think is more your thing. That was a really lucky shot there. I think that... Um, I think that this is a, an extremely engaging experience for early access. And keep in mind, like right now, we're just grinding out, uh, we're grinding out uh, content that we don't even need to do. Like, I've already done the single player stuff. If you strictly want to play the campaign, now is probably not the right time to buy in because there's really not that much campaign content in the game. But if you're, uh, if you're compelled by the gameplay here, uh, depending on the price, which I don't know, I would encourage you to, uh, to give it a shot because it's been a lot of fun so far and it's really rare for me to, to sit down and have like kind of a pseudo marathon session of something. An hour and a half is not really a marathon session, but it's, um, it's rare for me to be like, okay, now that I've played like an hour of that last night, I'm really eager to play more today on video, but, but indeed I am. So, uh, this comes out on early access on Friday. I've lost where my house is. There it is. Um, this comes out in early access on Friday. Um, I'd encourage you to check it out. I, I will... The deepest I'm willing to go here, over the top, is that I think if this comes out uh, and fulfills the promise that it has in its early access state, this could be the best Behemoth game ever made. It certainly, for me, is the one that, that's tickling me the most right now. Um, but for now, you know, strengths of the game, light strategy, art, tone, humor, um, VO is really good, and then, uh, the promise of online play at the very least. And the, the way that it mixes game, uh, systems from games like Darkest Dungeon and, uh, Pokemon, XCOM, etc., etc. Fire Emblem, I guess, more so than XCOM, but, uh, it's really neat. So, I, I'm enamored with this right now, and I hope that it, uh, continues to grow throughout early access. For now, there will be a link to check it out on Steam if you're interested. Uh, you can click that link in the video description below. It is in early access, so what you're seeing is subject to change. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.